the Golden Temple in India, one of the most beautiful buildings on earth. For millions of Sikhs like me, this is holy ground. But just over 25 years ago, it was a bloody battlefield. Tanks stormed the complex to capture this man, Jurnal Singh Bindrawale. To some, he was a defender of the Sikh faith. He, he was a great saint and great soldier. To others, he was a militant who terrorized for long enough. He may have started as a saint, but he didn't end as a saint, let me tell you that. It was Indira Gandhi who gave the order to capture Bindranwale and began a chain of events that would lead to thousands of deaths, including her own. Many Sikhs call this their own 9-11. I'm going back to the madness of 1984 to find out why neighbours became enemies and how a sacred shrine became a killing ground. It was like firing at St Paul's Cathedral in London. This journey will lead me to victims. And heroes. I feel proud that I have saved a one life. And will make me see my own faith in a new way. Ten years ago, I was visiting India with my family and we went to the Golden Temple. I was shooting a home movie, but then suddenly was overcome by the beauty and significance of the place. It was a truly spiritual moment. So overwhelming, I had to stop filming. It may seem strange, but I'd never felt connected to my faith until that point. It was no longer a place I had to visit. It was a place I needed to visit. Violent clashes have broken out. I'm a presenter. I'm not a baptized Sikh, which means that I cut my hair and don't adhere to the religious dress code. But since that visit to the Golden Temple, I've wanted to learn more about the faith I was born into. Sonia Diol is in fact a stage name. I was born Jaswinder Kaur Sidhu. But going to a predominantly white school in Birmingham in the 80s, I remember feeling embarrassed by my traditional Punjabi sounding name. I was more into pop music and fashion than the momentous news stories of the time. And quite a challenge for my mum and dad. <laughs> what was I like as a little girl? Very cute. Very sweet. But a little cheeky as well. Did you remember this one? This picture? This is going to the Gurdwara, I think. Yeah. I mean, mum, you used to make me wear some really dodgy Indian suits. I can't mm. believe you made me wear that. But we always think if you try to wear English clothes, you might be an English girl. If you put Indian clothes, suit, yeah. take you to the temple, you might be changed to the... Into an Indian girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have become quite the traditional Indian girl my mum dreamed of, but as I've got older, I do now take my faith more seriously. And I regularly go to a Sikh temple or Gurdwara. This is my local place of worship. It's the Soho Road Gurdwara in Birmingham and it's always busy. Lots of families coming here every day to worship. And the first thing you do when you come into a Sikh temple is to remove your shoes. Sikhs are followers of ten enlightened leaders called gurus. The first, Guru Nanak, taught that there is only one God and that men and women are equal. He stressed the importance of service to the wider community, so each Gurdwara has a free kitchen that anyone can enjoy. I've even seen Irish builders having their lunch break in here. The focus of any Gurdwara is the Holy Scriptures, or Guru Granth Sahib. We believe that this is not a book, but the definitive words of the Gurus. I know I'm biased, but my experience is that Sikhs work hard, often unnoticed, for whatever community they're part of. That's why these scenes from 1984 are so shocking. The whole of the front of it has been knocked out. There's rubble piled everywhere. You can only go into one. Because the Golden Temple is the symbol of Sikhism, millions around the world saw the army action quite simply as an assault on their faith.
I don't understand why this attack took place and the tragic events that followed afterwards. For me, I think this journey is going to be an emotional one, at times a painful one, and I know it's going to teach me something about my own identity as a Sikh and how I'm going to cope with that. I don't know. For me, this isn't a news assignment, it's a personal journey. And it begins in the Punjab, in the northwest of India. This is where my family are from. And although I've only been here a few times, it feels good to be back. This isn't going to make sense to some people. I was born and brought up in England, and yet I feel such a sense of connection and a real sense of belonging every time I come here. Just looking out, it's a really warm feeling. I'm actually, I feel very blessed to have two cultures that I take so much from. To understand the events of 1984, I need to find out more about the man at the heart of the story, Jarnail Singh Bindrawali. He was born in a violent year, 1947, the year of partition, when the Punjab was divided between India and the new nation of Pakistan. At the age of 13, Jarnail Singh was sent to a religious school in the Punjab countryside and it was there that a dramatic transformation took place. I'm off now to the school to find out why this young boy turned into such a fiery, inspirational leader. The school, called the Dandami Taksal, is a deeply religious place. So I've changed out of my western clothes into a traditional Punjabi outfit. I must admit to feeling rather nervous about being here. This is a strict male-dominated community and they may not approve of a Sikh woman with cut hair like mine. The Taksal is the place to go if you want to become a priest or preacher. The boys have a strict daily regime of prayer, exercise, but most important of all, learning the scriptures by heart. Sajit Singh Sodi was a teacher at the Taksal when Bindrawale joined in the mid 1960s. Tu si menu dasso Bindrawale ki dujje bachya to vakre lagde si thano. Lagde si, lagde si. Oh shant rende si ge, the bani parde rende si ge, jada dujje bachya no bani jabad parde si ge. ਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਧਰਮ ਬਾਰੇ ਉਹ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਬਰਦਾਸ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਧਰਮ ਤੋਂ ਉਲਟ ਗੱਲ ਕਰੇ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਬਰਦਾਸ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਗੁੱਸੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਵੀ ਜੇ ਕੁਝ ਕਿ ਨਰਾਜ਼ਗੀ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਫਿਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਛੱਡ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਬੈਠਣਾ ਉੱਠਣਾ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਚਲਣਾ ਛੱਡ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਬਿੰਦਰ ਵਾਲੇ ਵਾਸ ਕਲੀਅਰਲੀ ਅ ਪੈਸ਼ਨਟ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਹੂਸ ਡਿਟਰਮੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਵੋਸ਼ਨ ਵੁਡ ਮੀਨ ਥੈਟ ਇਨ 1977 ਏਜਡ ਓਨਲੀ 30 he would become head of the taksal okay why guru ji ka khalsa why guru ji ki the boys today have more modest ambitions ke tusi kithe jaoge ki banna chahunde ha assi vadde ho gaye di ragi banna chahunde ha assi ta vadde ho gaye guru maharaj de naal lagga ke je vadde ho aanga ta sada janm banda itthe hai ji the taksal has posed more questions than given answers the Bindrawale I heard about was someone who, if he disagreed with your religious views, would at worst just ignore you. We obviously know that there was more to him than that, and I have to find out what it was that changed him. The answer has to lie in the politics of the time. The leading Sikh party were the Akali Dal, who campaigned for greater autonomy for the Punjab. Lined up against them were the Congress party, dominated by Indira Gandhi and her son Sanjay. Congress had always advocated a secular, united India, and the Gandhis feared that the Akali call for greater autonomy in fact meant a separate Sikh religious state. In 1977, Indira Gandhi asked Sanjay to find a way to break the Akali Dal influence in the Punjab. Sanjay looked for someone who could set up a rival faction. Of the list of 20 names he was given, the new leader of the...